Thank you very much for staying with us. It's still GTV Breakfast. And at the GTV Breakfast uh, Clinic this morning, uh, we are going to be engaging you and your family on a very uh, important uh, lifestyle changing uh, chronic ailment. Tomorrow, 10th May, is uh, World Lupus Day. And we welcome especially uh, Dr. Richard Doe, who is a specialist physician with the rheumatology unit at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, who will be speaking to us about the chronic autoimmune disease that affects millions of people worldwide. Dr. Doe has been extensively involved in the research, diagnosis and treatment of lupus and has helped many patients to manage their symptoms and improve their quality of life. In this interview, we will be discussing the latest advancement uh, in lupus research and treatment as well as providing valuable information for anyone who has been diagnosed with that condition or knows someone who has. We also have with us Miss Dorcas Mayer to share her experience and her journey to surviving lupus this morning. Stay with us without much talking. Let's welcome Madam Dorcas Mayer. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Doe. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Tomorrow is the day, uh, but let's let's uh, zoom quickly into uh, lupus and what it is, what causes lupus. What is it? What causes it? So lupus is a short name for a very long name, mm. which is systemic lupus erythematosus. Wow. It's a mass full word, and so we try to use lupus to represent it so that everyone can see it and then also remember it. So lupus is a chronic systemic disease. Mm. And it's a, it comes under diseases that we call autoimmune diseases. That's what you have to break down for <clears> us, <throat> doctor. We'll try and break it down. Cool. So when we say autoimmune, we all have in, an immune system in our body that helps us fight diseases and any other things that the body thinks it does not need. But in people who have lupus or systemic lupus erythematosus, their own immune system seems to have problems and it attacks their own body cells and so it is like your own um, internal soldiers or policemen deciding to fight against yourself and we say it's systemic because it can affect all parts of your body from head to toe right. and it tends to be chronic how very common or how common is lupus lupus is common and indeed, that is why the World Lupus Day has been set aside and the whole month of May has been declared as the Lupus Awareness Month. Right. Lupus affects about 2.4 people of a thousand. So if you take about a thousand, you have about 2.4 the prevalence. Wow. And it keeps increasing. In Kolebu, we see an average of about six cases per month, new cases. And these are the ones that will come to hospital. Those that are not in hospital are also out there. And that is what we hope that this awareness will really get to. And those who have not yet gotten to us would also get to us and get some help. Right. So uh, when someone comes to Kualibu, uh, what test do you carry out first to establish whether or not they have lupus? So normally we would look at your signs and symptoms. Mm. And that is what really gives a lot of people a lot of problems because the signs and symptoms i must tell you mm. look like any other disease that you might have come across the very common ones like malaria typhoid so most people would have joint aches would have um, body pains may even have a fever right but most of the time they tend to have skin lesions and when they have these skin lesions that sometimes brings them to hospital because that is obvious mm -hmm. for everyone to see. Right. So, so we, we, we're putting some audio uh, uh, yeah. uh, one of the, the very uh, first image with the uh, lady whose eyes uh, seem to be uh, closing. Closed, or, yeah. Yes. So uh, this lady yeah. has um, what you call the mala rash. Okay. And if you look closely to the part of the eye, down there you'll see some rash. And it looks like it is in both eyes. So we call it the butterfly rash. Now, the butterfly rash is classical 
but not everyone with lupus will get this butterfly rash. Okay, so they, they, they vary in their appearance. They vary right. in their appearance okay, so and in their presentation. Let's let's have a, let, there's, there was one there's a few of the images you sent to us. Let's 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 take the second. My production team will help me with that. Yes, Great. So we have. So what you could like. have hair loss, and yes. this hair loss, you know, in Ghana, if you get this, they are going to say you get you've got ringworm. Okay. And you are really going to treat it in all the other places that you can including using non-orthodox means okay but you need to get to us don't blame your hairdresser or if you like your barber you should come to us rather but so they could it, have hair loss right and that is another hair another loss hair we loss. call it patchy hair loss yes there could be swellings swellings of all your joints including your small fingers their knees as is being shown there. Doctor, with swollen joints, doesn't it present signs such as, uh, which mimics uh, 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 arthritis? Good. So, in fact, the arthritis, there's a type that also comes under the autoimmune diseases. Okay. And if you have your joints swollen, just don't go for a massage. Get to the hospital, and if you have heard about lupus, do ask your healthcare provider. Please, I've learned about lupus. Could it be lupus? It could be any other thing. You right. could have just fallen and then gotten a swollen knee. But we always want to be sure it is not lupus. And there are some, I saw one, yes, this, this very one, with, with what looks like uh, itches or rashes yes. on the body with yeah. swells. So they it. get what you call photosensitive rashes. Okay. So in the sun exposed, the places that are exposed to the sun, you may get rashes, right. and sometimes some of them may form these nodular or small, small mm. um, swellings like pimples, right. and they may be there. Mm -hmm. So when you are getting rashes, don't always say that it is whatever name you want to say, mm. but get to the hospital and let them find out. Right. Don't think it's chicken pox. Right. Let, doctor, before I bring um, Dorcas in, let me quickly come to you. How common is this among adults or children? Good. So... Lupus can affect all ages. Right. And uh, my master, we um, diagnose a child at the age as early as two years. Right. And so children to adults. And in adults, we say that it's more common in the reproductive age and common in females. Okay. Males okay. can get it, right. but it's not that common. And when males get it, it tends to be more severe. Right. Right. Okay. Let me let me bring on Dorcas. Dorcas, welcome once again. How old were you when you were diagnosed with lupus, and what type or where was your symptoms? Okay. So I was 19 years. Okay. And now I'm 33 years. So that's about 14 years ago. Yeah. I was diagnosed with lupus. My symptoms: I had the butterfly rash. Okay. I had hair loss. I saw your reaction when those were on the on the screen. <laughs> I could just put my hand in my hair. The hair would just come out like that wow. so i had hair loss i had joint pain and then the swollen arms it was all swollen every time my legs and my arms were swollen how how surprised or how devastating were you when you had you've been diagnosed with lupus it was very devastating uh, first i read when i was diagnosed mm -hmm. in 2009 i didn't have much idea about it okay uh -huh. But later, I read about it, and I'm like, wow. And you know, they said you're going to manage it all your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, hey, how am I going to go through this thing all my life? So initially, I knew I had lupus. It wasn't easy for me at all. It was very, very devastating. I was like, where is this thing coming from? What did I do to get this disease? Yeah. Awesome. Right. Let's, let's look at cost implication financially. Uh, how were you affected with managing or treating uh, this ailment? Yeah, treating lupus is very, very, very expensive. Wow. I remember some time ago, some of the drugs I was buying a month, some up to 3000 2000 and then the labs you have to do, the routine labs alone, is, is quite expensive. There are times I did biopsy, I did the blood infusion, all those things. It comes with a lot of costs. Let, let, me, let me come to the doctor. Uh, obviously, from what she's just told me, I, I can imagine what the burden will be on the family as well. When people are diagnosed with lupus, how do they respond to your diagnosis and how does that uh, affect their family as well, especially with children? Great. So anyone diagnosed with lupus, 
whether a child mm. or those in the reproductive age, it is always um, a very um, sad news for them because one, they do not know a lot about lupus and they think that is the end of life. But as Dawkins has shared her mm -hmm. story, she's been living with lupus for 14 years now. Um, there is hope if you are diagnosed with lupus, it's not the end. We have health personnel who would take good care of you. There are medications. The problem is that these medications are expensive. And so they tend to go beyond the packets of the ordinary Ghanaian. Wow. And we are hoping that these medications would be put under the National Health Insurance. Okay. They will also have to do a lot of lab investigations because these people will need to be on medications to help manage most of their symptoms and condition. And we need to do these labs to be sure that we are on good track. So they, even when they are not sick, they have to do what we call routine monitoring labs. Right. And that costs a lot of money. Let's look at patients who present multiple symptoms. In the case of Dr. she had hair loss, she had, uh, uh, you know, the butterfly rash. Uh, when one is managing or treating these is it the uh, symptoms you're managing or perhaps the medication is to get rid of the condition itself good so that's the other part that when you diagnose anyone with lupus they always get frightened because they will want to know if you cure them once and for all mm. at the moment there is no medication that cures lupus totally we manage it like how we manage hypertension and diabetes so we say that it's a chronic disease and you need to use your medications to suppress the disease right. so that the disease will not take over your body mm -hmm. and then you can really be in control. Thank you very much, Doc. Uh, uh, Dorcas, let me bring you on. Since it's a manageable thing, you only have to manage it because there's no... Tell us, talk us through your uh, way of managing uh, yourself and how uh, that perhaps decides or determines your interactions with other people okay so um i can i want to describe my journey then i tell yeah, you about yeah. okay so in 2009 our first year in the university uh, there were times i didn't have much idea about it so i was stressing myself stress is one thing that when you don't manage very well you always have to go back to the hospital so uh, you have to really manage your stress yeah and then uh, there were times i'm writing exams my hands were swollen and all that yeah. it wasn't easy at all in the university like this i had to take off my hair so my four years in Lagos, i was just with with cap because okay. it, it was that bad and i was always getting sick i was always so i was fortunate that it was diagnosed early because of the butterfly rash and the hair loss it was so obvious that this was lupus so i was diagnosed early that's what helped but through the journey it, it has not been easy at all i remember in 2018 i had a flare i overstressed myself and then i i had a flare so i i was admitted at uh, kolebu for almost a month yeah i stopped my medication so the, the advice i'll give people is the medication is very very important mm -hmm. very 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 important when you take your medications you check what works for you maybe in terms of diet there are some food when i take i become very weak mm -hmm. and then your lifestyle you have to really manage your lifestyle and then your stress levels right. if you're able to deal with all these things you 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 really live for long god by the grace of God, I've been married with three kids, right. and I was diagnosed before I got married. Wow. So, it has been a fruitful journey. Thank you, thank you very much, Doctor. I'm, I'm coming to you. How likely, given that uh, she was diagnosed even before she started bearing children, how likely is a, a parent uh, to pass on the condition to their child? Is it hereditary? Well, there is a genetic factor, but we do not say that it's directly um, passed on. Okay. So the causes of lupus is quite multifactorial so we have a genetic component we have an environmental component and so if you are you have the genetic um, susceptibility that is you are predisposed yeah. you could but yes it runs in families 
And so if you have it, then we need to be keeping an eye on other family members. And if you are a mother, then we keep an eye on the children. However, there's always good hope because if your symptoms are well controlled, you are not likely to pass it on okay. to your newborn baby, what we call um, neonatal lupus. Right, okay. Uh, tomorrow is the World Lupus Day. Uh, do you have any uh, awareness programs planned for tomorrow and where will that take place? Good. So we have, we declared the whole month of May mm. as um, Lupus Awareness Day. And the World Lupus Day um, is on the team making lupus visible. And we do that by wearing purple. And so that is why we are in purple. And you see our inscriptions in purple. And all those who are um, our um, volunteers are also in purple in the studio. So if you see anyone in purple, that means that we are making lupus visible. We are trying to tell people about lupus. And if you have lupus, there's hope for you. You need to come to Kolebu. We have the support group called the uh, Rheumatology Initiative, try for short. And on tomorrow, we are going to be on all social media. We also have programs on all the national media, as we are doing today, to educate people about lupus, to bring hope to people, and to let people know that, indeed, lupus is not the end of life. If you have lupus, you can go ahead and have your life, just as doctors. You can marry, you can have your children. All you need to do is to have um, your interaction with your healthcare provider very well. We also would be doing educational programs mm. uh, and on Zoom, which we intend to educate both our patients and our healthcare providers. You may have to share the link with us, the Zoom conference uh, link. You may yes. have to share that with us, so that at least we, we share with viewers we, who, who would want to uh, even learn more about uh, lupus. As, great, as it that on. would be done. That would be done. So we intend to do that and also how to live with lupus will all be on the various um, Zoom media and we'll share the link with everyone. Thank you so very much. It's been great having you, Dorcas. We're, we're wrapping up. We're all too soon out of time. But before we go, uh, how do you, uh, how do people react when they know you've got lupus? Okay. Uh, initially, I was not really open okay. about, because I remember when I was doing my service, there were times people who always think you are lazy, mm. but you are very weak and the disease is not so visible sometimes because with the hair you can cover up and all that so people always think you were lazy so there were only few people i opened up in the past okay. but now I, I i don't mind at all you don't. i've i'm open yeah. i let people know that i have lupus mm. and i educate people i work in a school okay. anyway and there was this day i i was able to diagnose one okay i didn't diagnose but yeah, i saw the symptoms yeah. And I made the lady come to Kolibu, and now she has been diagnosed. So people, so far, people don't treat me any. I just any let them different from any the difference, any different. Awesome, thank and you I so, want to so very much. Use this opportunity okay. to really thank my family. Ah. They've been very, very supportive, especially my husband. Thank you. I thank him so much. Thank you so very much. <laughs> and um, that's that's where we draw the curtain on the lupus discussion. It is treatable. It's a condition, it has both genetic and environmental uh, way of uh, affecting people. And so uh, don't hide yours if you're diagnosed or if you see any symptoms very unusual. Uh, approach Kolibu, go to the rheumatology uh, unit and get help. You can live a normal life with lupus. Thank you very much for staying with us.